Alright, I've talked a lot about these here Nickelodeon games for a while now, both on this channel and my main channel. Uh, like, comment, uh, subscribe, favourite, follow, and uh, hit that donate organs button to stay up to date, boys and girls. So at this stage I kinda know what to expect from this type of stuff. But I had no idea what to expect when I jumped into Fairly Odd Parents breaking the rules. Fairly Odd Parents was one of those shows on Nickelodeon I never watched. My main experience with the series came from the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour specials and the episodes of the show that came with those DVDs. From a young age, I never liked Timmy's character or personality, and especially not his voice. That voice keeps me awake at night. Like nails on a chalkboard. Like the thought of Planet Sheen being something that someone thought was a good idea. These thoughts haunt me. But uh, then I remember that this show brought us the wonderful Dinkelberg. I can understand the appeal of the show and the incredible creativity that went into each episode to be able to keep the show going for as long as it did. And I'm sure if I gave it enough time, I'd learn to enjoy it. But today we are talking about one of the Fairly Odd Parents games called Breaking the Rules. Nice abbreviation there, bre. So Breaking the Rules was made by Blitz Games, a company I am a big fan of as they made my favorite SpongeBob game, Creature from the Krusty Krab. Uh, but they also made some really low quality games. <laughs> A lot of like old Kinect games and some of the worst SpongeBob games. So really, what I'm asking here is, what happened, Blitz Games? You've changed, man. Well, before you shut down 2013, of course. You stopped changing then. It of course was published by THQ, and the game sold around 200,000 copies for the GameCube alone. Now I need to explain this at the beginning. I'm not a fan of the show, so 99% of the references, in-jokes, or anything like that will fly over my head. So I'm mostly here to judge the game based on the game itself and what it offers as a single product. That may be unfair to the game, as it is built on the brand and the show, and built for fans, so I'll try to keep that in mind. But first things first, this game looks really bad. Like, wow. This came out the same year as Battle for Bikini Bottom, and it looks like an N64 game. I was expecting it to look better, as I had seen some footage of it, but my guess is that the footage I had seen was from an emulator. But on PS2, this game doesn't do it for me. At its best, it looks like a sophisticated PS1 game. I mean, look at this. What's wrong with your face? Dinkelberg! Also, the sound design and voice recordings are incredibly low quality. Remember, this came out the same year as Battle for Bikini Bottom, which sounds like this. Oh no! Everyone will burn! And then they'll get all itchy and peel! And this game sounds like this. Ah, just another day or two. You have to get up, Timmy! It's really weird, and if this game does get a remaster like other Nickelodeon games, I hope they can fix the audio. But graphics, sound design, all that isn't the most important part of a game. It makes up a lot of the experience and dictates how much you can really lose yourself in the experience, but the main focus is the gameplay. And for the most part, the gameplay is good. I was expecting it to be pretty awful, but surprisingly, Blitz can sometimes make something fun. It most definitely isn't a diamond in the rough like Creature from the Krusty Krab, but let's talk about it. So the game is based around the main boy, Timmy Turner, and his fairy godparents, and all the stuff that happens with them. As with most Nickelodeon games, we aren't here for the story, so anyway, moving on. The gameplay consists of going through these different levels with different themes and objectives to complete. Each mission seems to follow the same type of concept as the show as far as I know and probably have ties in and references to the show in each of the locations. This really allows the game to be creative and give us a much funnier and more entertaining experience. The gameplay is pretty standard for this type of game. Platforming, collecting, boss battles and some mini game type stuff. We've seen it time and time again. And that's because it works. You have the two main gameplay aspects, platforming and collecting. The mini game slash gimmicky parts to break up the platforming and then a boss battle to bookend that part of the experience. Lots of games like this follow that structure and it works. For a game like this, what more can you want and expect? Outside the graphics and audio, there isn't too many more ways 
a kids game like this, made for this audience, could really be better. From what I've seen, it captures the tone and quality of the show and brings you a kind of generic but still entertaining and fun game that is actually decently long at around 9 hours or so for most people. If you are a fan of the show or just want a simple platformer that knows exactly what it is and does the best that it can, then Fairly Odd Parents Breaking the Rules is a fun time. Oh hey look, it's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, maybe possibly consider subscribing and hitting that organ donate button. I need some kidneys for a, uh, a pet project. I recently delved into the scary world of YouTube statistics and found out that 80% of the people who watch my stuff aren't subscribed. So I want to you know, try and fix that a little bit. Anyway, here's a question for you all down in the comments. What's a cartoon you always loved that no one else ever talks about? You feel like you're the only person in the world that knows about it. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Alright, see you next time. Bye bye.